Within a 24-hour time period, the city of Portland, Oregon, cleans up a homeless encampment, does a total sweep, and then begins building pickleball courts. As you do, it's a great opportunity to revamp areas of the park, a spokesperson for the mayor says. What's going on on in Portlandia? Let's find out. (laughs) Here we go. I bet you didn't think that we're going to be talking about pickleball courts as a solution for homeless encampment eradication, but we are. Okay. Yeah. So within a 24-hour period this week, a homeless encampment at Portland, Oregon Park was removed and construction crew showed up to build pickleball courts and a skate ramp in its place. All right. What's your first thought on this? Well, they are doing whatever they can so that there isn't a surface for said unhoused people of Portland, Oregon to put their tents. That's literally what you've got going on. Okay, what can we do here? Build something, put it up. Oftentimes you'll see, you know, after a homeless camp is, is removed, you'll see boulders put in, you'll see rocks put in, you'll see the eco blocks put in, so you can't bring in an RV in there. And that to me, I mean, okay, yes, it does. It does solve the immediate issue. It just pushes people around and it doesn't really solve the real issue, which is you got a bunch of drugged out people, big majority of them drugged out people just living willy nilly wherever they want. And so by, you know, putting rocks and erecting structures up so you can't live there, uh, they just move on down the, down the street. And literally in Seattle, I've watched them move as far as just across the street. Yeah, they're told, okay, can't be here. This is the Washington State Department of Transportation. Clear out. We're clearing you guys out. And they will literally go, yeah, 75, 100 feet down the road, pick up their tent, move it. Wild stuff. Homelessness has skyrocketed in Portland, most notably during the COVID-19 pandemic. For more than two years, tents have lined a two-block area of Laurelhurst Park, according to Willamette Week. So Laurelhurst Park has been, that has been in the media for a whole bunch of t- reasons. And it's been in there multiple times to the point where I read it and I go, oh, yeah, Laurelhurst Park. And the reason I know that is we've got a community here in Seattle. It's called Laurelhurst. And it's one of the most expensive areas of Seattle. It's um, it's overlooking Lake Washington. It's really close to the University of Washington. It's an epic area, but it's it's like old school, rich Seattle, right? And so first time I read Laurelhurst Park, I'm like, what? Uh, I can't be. No, it's in Portland. So on Monday, the homeless encampments were removed by city officials. And by Tuesday morning, construction crews showed up to build courts for the popular paddle sport called pickleball. Pickleball, I believe, is the official sport of the state of Washington. Yeah, I know. Not football, not baseball, not even hockey or soccer or badminton, but pickleball. It's a fun game to play, though. It's like a short version of tennis with a hard paddle, small ball. Yeah, you whack it around. It's pretty fun. I like I like a good game of pickleball. But to be installing pickleball courts when there was homeless encampments, I mean, that's that's a stretch at best, right? I mean, what are we even doing here? Oh yeah, they're building a pickleball court. So you got people living outside for various reasons. We all know what they are. And that's your solution. Ah, put up a pickleball court. Ah, throw in a skate ramp. It'll be good. It'll be fine. A skate ramp and bicycle course will also be built in the area. Portland Parks and Recreation told Coin6. You know what's funny about this story is the story's been out for a little bit. And nobody really even batted an eye. It's just like, oh, okay. Really, you're building some pickleball courts. Uh, okay. Uh, good call. Let me know when you're done. I'll swing on by with my racket. We'll whack around that little ball some. <laughs> These plans for Lowellhurst Park have been in the work for some time. It's a great opportunity to revamp areas of the park to better serve the community. <laughs> what a spin. That is a great spin. I love listening to politicians. I love listening to politicians' office. Their spins on how they're doing one thing and they want to, you know, segue into, oh, this is why this makes sense. It's a great way to serve the community. How about you take those resources and you go clear out another homeless encampment so that residents of that area, businesses in that area, 
can, you know, live a normal life. What about that? Nah, nah, we got to keep them out. Therefore, we're going to build a pickleball court and, and have some skateboarding and have some skateboarding going on. A skate park. Skate park. Yeah. Something that that, that skate park won't have any graffiti, will it? Mm, yeah. Something that the neighborhood has been asking for. A spokesperson for Mayor Ted Wheeler's office told Fox News Digital on Thursday, guarantee you the residents of this park have been asking for do whatever it takes to get this massive homeless encampment lining our streets out of here. Get it out of here. Whatever you got to do. Don't care what it is. They weren't saying, hey, you know what? After you get, you know, after you get the poor people that are just, you know, down on their luck for a scooch and they've been living here for two years on the sidewalk and street of our nice little neighborhood. After you get them out, could you build us a pickleball court? I mean, how does that even go down? How does that, who, who, who even does that? Yeah. Keep Portland weird, right? Portlandia. That's how it goes down. Yeah, I mean, apparently the permitting process for the community pickleball court is cut pretty short when you've lived with a homeless encampment for several years. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So if you're looking to get a homeless encampment away from your home or your place of business, just throw out the idea of pickleball court. See how that see how that works in, in your community. The homeless living at the park were given a week's notice to leave the area and were offered stays at a shelter and free storage for additional belongings, the mayor's office told Vox. That's standard, standard stuff, nothing new there. Parks and Recreation spokesperson and taxpayers, you pay for their stuff to be stored, even though oftentimes it is not discernible whether it's garbage or personal belongings. Got to keep that stuff. You pay for it. Well done. A parks and recreation spokesperson told Coin6 that they cannot remember the last time a mayor has made such a decision, while some residents and activists in the area are scratching their heads over the move. That's where I kind of came in. I'm like, I need to read this one. I mean, this, this is worthy of reading. This is worthy of reading. Pickleball courts. Pickleball. How am I going to, how many times am I going to say that in this podcast? Probably a lot. Those people have to find a place to stay warm at night, and that's not easy, homeless advocate Pat Schwebert told Fox 12. Okay, no, but neither is having a homeless encampment across the street in your neighborhood. Yeah, because we've read stories about what has happened in this exact homeless encampment. It's the standard stuff. People, you know, breaking into houses, people, you know, stealing stuff, assaulting people, you name it, it's happened. That's eh, nothing new. The new spin here is, you got it, pickleball courts. Huh. The part where they have been staying, they chose that because it wasn't in front of somebody's house. Nah, it's probably because it was flat and on some grass. Yeah. You ever sleep on a tent on, uh, say, uh, you know, an ice surface at, I don't know, 16,000 feet? Not all that comfortable. Not very comfortable. Not a lot different than middle of winter on concrete. Yeah, you get the picture. If you can be on grass, that's where you want to be. It's going to be a lot softer, even though maybe you've got a pad or something in there. Yeah, just being on soft surface. Most of the people that live on that street are reasonable people. They're just trying to survive. Well, yeah. I, you know, since reasonable is part of this channel, I'm going to disagree that most of the people that lived on that street were reasonable because the, the taxpaying residents that are reasonable on that street, they tended to disagree with that statement. So I think we're just going to, just going to go with that. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that statement. A woman who lives in the neighborhood described to Coin6 that a solution to the homeless population in the city needs to go further than one park. One, you got it, pickleball court. Ah, don't forget the skate park. Love me a good skate park, right? At one point in time, took my kids to the skate park. Actually took one of my younger cousins to a, a skate park, I believe, at one point in time. I had a skateboard. Yeah, I had a skateboard in 19... 77, whatever year the movie Jaws came out, because I had a Jaws skateboard, which I still have. I saw it at 7-Eleven. Of course, you know, I'm probably, what, what am I, nine? Something like that. Yeah, eight? Because I'm born in November. 
and um, November of 68. So I saw this really cool skateboard. It was like almost a glow in the dark skateboard. And um, they were kind of narrow. It was in the shape of, you know, skateboard. Had a had a flip tail. Oh, it was awesome. Big, chunky wheels. This is when skateboarding was brand new. Saw it at 7-Eleven. I bugged my dad for, I don't know, probably a week. I ended up resorting to leaving him notes on his steering wheel of his car. Please bring me the skateboard home. And one day after bugging him enough, he did. And I still have that skateboard to this day. It's one of my epic treasures. And it was a Jaws skateboard. It was promoting the movie Jaws. So not only did I get Jaws, I got the skateboard. I've still got it to prove it. I don't know if the perception to the public is that it's Laurelhurst and not everywhere else, that it's just a solution for this neighborhood instead of a bigger solution for all the homelessness in the city, said resident Annette Schaff Palmer. Lentz deserves a solution. Laurelhurst deserves a, a solution. Downtown deserves a solution. It's not just this neighborhood. Correct. And that's why I'm doing a podcast on within 24 hours. This is what you got going on. It's a weird deal, isn't it? It's a weird deal. But hey, you know what? I think at this point in time, you got to take whatever you get as far as solutions for the homeless encampment situation. You get a park in your neighborhood, you know what you do? You hunker down and say, where's my racket? Where's my board? I'm going to go use whatever you got going on there. I not, I might need to, I'm going to go down to Portland. I know I keep talking about going down to Portland, but just stuff has been coming up, you know, YouTube strike and whatnot. And uh, those kind of Johnny hustled some of our plans. So I need to go down there. I got to put this on my list of, can I go see the skateboard park that's being, you know, erected in Portland where the homeless encampment was? That's just it's, it's stuff you don't see across the rest of America, is it? You just, it's just, not not a deal. It's not a thing. And then to have a skateboard park erected? Mm. Number of homeless people in the Portland area has increased by about 50% since 2019. 50% since 2019. That is an atrocious number. The only way that that can happen is when you just wildly wildly encourage people to come into your city, which Portland in some would argue a roundabout way. They've done exactly that. The mayor's office projected earlier this year that there are about 6,000 people living on the streets in the Portland region. The figure is considered an undercount, but is still markedly higher than the estimated 4,000 people who are homeless in 2019. What are those real numbers? Are they like 8,000? Because whenever I see a homeless, in, a homeless count, and then I hear somebody who's like, yeah, that's that's not that's not the real number. It's probably double that. I always kind of think, well, you know, how how do you actually do physically? How do you do? I mean, are you sweeping everywhere? Are you just literally going everywhere? Because if you miss half the people, you get half the count. That's kind of the way I see it. Any which way, community of Laurelhurst in Portland no longer has a homeless encampment, and where those tents once were. Yep, you got it. You can play pickleball or ride your skateboard. Weird times, aren't they? Yeah, that's this is literally a solution. But we're going to take it because what else are you going to do? Just keep bitching about the tents? Yeah, you could do that. That doesn't seem to do a lot either. All right, that's it for me on this one. I wish I had more of a resolution to how this all went down and long-term how this is going to impact things, but it doesn't. And that's why we're talking about it, because it's Portlandia. All right, that's all I got on this one. Thanks for being here. We'll catch up soon. Talk then. Bye for now. <laughs>